Hi everybody, I'm David Malloway. I'm about to show you two different video clips that depict successful education in engineering technology. Um, engineering technology today really drives almost every different field of engineering towards mechatronics, where we converge mechanical things with software and electrical things to then make machines that do whatever we wish. I have a very severe concern that our department at Texas A&M of engineering technology and industrial distribution is not equipped to deliver this education to the students. And this is a big, big shortcoming because this is the, the type of content and the type of outcomes that drives the passion of the students to dream of becoming engineers, especially applied engineers, because the reason that they initially chose their career path is because they can see all the capabilities that an engineer can produce once they have the knowledge base in these disciplines. The goal of our department at ETID is to deliver this education to the students because that is the education that they are paying for and that is the education that they are dedicating four years of their life and sacrificing many other opportunities to engage in. I will ask that you take a look at these next two video clips with one question in mind and that is do we have professors, teachers, or staff that are capable of delivering the education that can drive the projects that you're about to see. I have a deep concern that we have precisely zero professors who have ever gone through the process of developing, building, and testing a machine such as a robot like you'll see soon. And we have therefore zero professors who are able to deliver the education and teach and instruct the students on how to do it. So that means that we're asking students every single semester for the last at least eight years. Um, more often than not, the students will graduate having been asked to produce an outcome such as the following, and yet there are no instructors that know what they are asking of the students since they do not carry the experience of doing so. So that video featured a gathering of several different teams of undergraduate engineering students who created various robot prototypes from scratch in less than six months. This took place in early 2025 in the capital city of Malaysia. Each team demonstrated a real working robotic machine that addressed a real world challenge with automation and mechatronics. This level of ambition and passion and readiness to invent new outcomes is the goal. It naturally drew in the support of the state government and corporate sponsors and offered to the students the experience they imagined when they enrolled as an engineering student. This next video was produced by one of my Malaysian student teams just last year. Welcome to the field test video of Team Zamalek. The field test was done on bushes with red chilies. The prototype has one camera for detection and other camera for navigation. The system was connected via Wi-Fi router connection. The machine vision detection was initialized to start the process. 
The prototype was navigated using remote controller to start detection. Now the camera started detecting the chilies. The detection system can be seen from the GUI on the laptop. During the detection, whenever a deceased chili like this was detected, it played an alert sound by a speaker of the prototype. Now it was time to test fertilizer spray system on the plants. It was also controlled by the remote controller, making it easy for farmers. Now the prototype was navigated with simultaneously spraying the fertilizer on the plants. The prototype was further tested on a rough terrain. The four-wheel drive system helps to navigate through the rough paths in a farm. This makes the prototype to navigate easily in farms. Thanks for watching, Team Zamalek. Okay, going off script a little bit. This is the remarkable part of that whole situation. All of those projects were just based on one specific lab equipment that was purpose-built for the education of robotics for undergraduate students. This is the Scuttle robot. This is the same platform that I led in creation with several undergraduate students starting from around 2017 at Texas A&M University. So this is the robot that comes along with curriculum and it comes along with lessons and it comes along with hands-on experiential trials and tests that get the experience of working with Wi-Fi, working with embedded computers, working with 3D printing and all of the natural modern technologies that we use in engineering today. So as of the very end of 2019, I as a staff member had left Texas and January 1st, I was in Malaysia. And before that time, before January 2020, Malaysia had absolutely zero assets relating to this educational robot. I introduced this curriculum at Texas A&M in 2017. So we had a three year head start, really almost four years. And since that time, I have seen Malaysia take the information in the curriculum and accelerate their education more than 10 times faster and 10 times more successful rates of students building successful projects than I have here in Texas. This is what it takes to create outcomes like the ones that you just saw. We have to have labs in our education that have purpose-built equipment, and not only the equipment, but all of the accessory tools for measuring and testing and building and modifying that equipment. We need to have exhaustive curriculum that is completely remade, that is based on the modern technologies that we perhaps did not have access to if you had graduated with your PhD, ready to teach and ready to conquer the world 10 years ago. There are new technologies and we have to modernize and adapt, which means we need to have study, modern study resources that can change on the fly. We're not using a textbook from 50 years ago that has had minor editing changes. We're using real online resources and we're accessing those through real modern changeable revision tracked um, assets that are on the cloud like everyone uses in real modern business and then the professors. It required in Malaysia, they had professors that had the humility to go back and study alongside the students so that the professors could understand what the students were out there exploring and retrieving and studying from the internet instead of leaving the students to take the journey alone. And then we need professors with the spirit of collaboration. We have to have professors that are willing to work together, to willing to update their own knowledge base based on their peers and their colleagues new information. We need to have the, the software expert take one step back and invite the professors and the other educators who are experts in mechanical things. And we need to be able to update our, our curriculum and our content and our uh, assets that, we, that the students build on in places where you can go and also retrieve the updated assets of other educators. Thanks for watching everybody. That was my message to my own department at Texas A&M University. And I hope that you could take this in as a little inspiration and to realize that uh, we don't have barriers, whether you're in a developing country or you're in the most wealthy country in the history of the world. Uh, the barriers now in the world of creating the new outcomes we want is based on your own attitude and your community and the actions that you take.